Hello, welcome to the executive job video testimonial. My name is Jay Oza. I'm a writer, speaker, and an executive coach, and also an author of this book, Winning Speech Moments, How to Achieve Your Objective with Anyone, Anytime, Anywhere. The book is available on Amazon. You can get it as a, in a Kindle version or soft cover, whichever works for you. And also I have resources that you can pick up from my website, like checklist and a speech workbook that can really help you as you're preparing for the interview. And I use many of the techniques that I cover in this book because at the end of the day, a job interview, when you break it down, is a speaking event. You're going to be giving short speeches, and that's what this book uh, teaches you. In this video, you're going to see a testimonial by Jelani. And I helped Jelani get a job, a very good job, at the largest e-commerce retailer. You can probably guess who that is. Jelani had excellent experience in the military, but he had not ever interviewed on the civilian side. And he made it past the first interview, and now he was going in for a face-to-face -face interview. So it was very high stakes, and I, I worked with him, and together... Uh, we got to win. Now, if you are in a similar situation, looking to move up, you're kind of stuck at your job, you want to move up, give me a call. It takes roughly two to four sessions. I would say minimum two sessions, uh, average about four, and at maximum six. I can't remember in, in one year where I have done six sessions. Six sessions would be really an outlier. Most of them, two sessions. And I charge uh, $500 per session. So at most, you're talking about an investment of $1,000 to $2,000. Before you say, wow, that's a lot of money, it isn't. Because if this is a job that can potentially change your career and possibly even your life, that $2,000 is nothing. It's, uh, it's chump change. So... Think about it. Uh, you're probably, I would say, 80 to 90 percent there, but that 10 percent you need to get to 100 percent, and that's where coaching comes in. Because there's a lot of stuff that you need to talk to with someone like myself or someone else uh, that you can find. But definitely get a coach. I'm available here to help you, and uh, we can. If you're in the New Jersey area, we can do it face to face. But video just works just as well. Most of my coaching sessions are over the video and I haven't seen any you know issues with that okay so watch this video pick up some tips uh, and at the end if you have any questions comments and suggestions or even criticism let me know and if you or anybody you think can benefit from my coaching hey just ask him to drop me an email or give me a call now watch Jelani's video you'll enjoy it My background in the military, I joined uh, high school and I was a jet engine technician, um, the rating in the Navy. And, um, you know, so for almost 10 years, I had this rating, which is called gas turbine technician, mechanical. And, um, but I always loved technology. So throughout the uh, almost 10 years that I did in the military, um, I was working on jet engines and doing preventative maintenance. After a while, I was a department manager for the fuel and lube oil quality management program. And then from there, I went to um, the, eating, the intermediate side of the repairs for jet engines. But I always loved technology, you know, and uh, I knew I was getting to a point where it was almost a halfway mark to retirement in the military, which is 20 years. And um, I really wanted to spend my last couple of uh, years getting myself ready for the career I really wanted to pursue, which was in the information, the computer science and information technology field. So um, the approach that I took with it, the approach that I took to eventually get over to that side of the career, I knew I was going to be at a handicap because a lot of my, um, the, the actual on-hands workforce experience, I didn't have that. I didn't, um, 
manage, you know, uh, 500 end users, or I didn't write these, um, develop the software for, you know, this corporations to use. So I took it, I took real good advice from um, someone that, you know, I was asked, I was trying to learn from them from the field I was trying to get into. They're saying that, hey, you have to really immerse yourself inside the field that you're trying to go to. So while I was on my last uh, three years of shore duty, I started hitting college really hard. Um, I, you know, I started taking a lot of programming classes and um, I did, uh, just before I got out, they had a program, which is one of what I was part of, was Onwards to Opportunity. And they, you know, they offered a free certification for veterans transitioning from active duty to civilian life. So um, with my school and getting my degree, and um, that certification that I obtained with um, Onward to Opportunity, um, when I was up looking for positions, I went through the uh, Hire Our Heroes coordinators, and you know they give you a list of companies that um, are looking for veterans. And this e-commerce company, you know, I always, you know, I love that company. So I say, hey, this might be a chance for me to actually uh, work with a company that I really love. That way, you know. I get that job satisfaction. I'm working for a company I really love, doing something I really love. So um, I went through and they went through the process and it was that job was specifically looking for a veteran. And um, again, you know, the only thing I was worried about was the actual workforce experience. But because of what I've done in the past, since this job was gonna be very technical, um, I'm not stranger to technical work. You know, I worked on jet engines for uh, almost 10 years and um, I maintained them. I did preventive maintenance. Uh, you know, there was up, never had an issue. So I knew how to troubleshoot. I knew how to look at a problem and uh, look at the symptoms and solve it, which is going to be the same thing really for the job. You're just going to be applied to the technology world. And I didn't have that workforce experience. So, um, but I did a lot of schooling and, um, you know, so. Once I got the, the process for this company was, they did a pre-screening, I, I was past that. They did a virtual interview, I passed that one, you know. And then I did an on-site interview with, um, with a couple of the guys there and the manager. And, you know, I got back the good news that they offered me the position and, you know, I jumped on it because now it's only going up from there. And um, that process, I honestly can say, I don't think I would have got the position if it wasn't for uh, the great people that work with Hire Our Heroes because um, they really, you know, they really helped me out. You know, you helped me out with mock interviews and what things to say and what things to focus on and, you know, uh, make the interview not like an interview with not a, a back and forth question, but make it like a conversation. And I applied so much of that, you know, I was just like a conversation between friends is what I was aiming for when I took that interview. So the, the conversation was very, very um, casual. And um, I, I believe I left on a good note. They did ask me technical questions and some of them I didn't know, which was, I was prepared for. But again, you know, the interview process, I tried to make it as casual as possible, that it wasn't like a normal, um, a normal interview. That way, like you said, when they leave, they're gonna remember that, hey, you know, this guy, he did have the technical background. Yes, he has not worked in the field, but you know, he has a technical background. He learns quick and he's, this is someone they can see me working with. I mean, well, you know, they could see themselves working with it, which is me. And um, I, I got the position and um, I'm very excited to start shortly. About a month. I remember I applied for it on May 30th. And you know, today is May 30th. I mean, uh, June 30th, yeah. June 30th, sorry. So it took about a month, but um, I think it was a little bit quicker because the, the area that I'm in, they're really looking for people. So I think that kind of expedited the position a little bit. For my research, because I did research on a lot of, um, uh, you know, like using other third party uh, organizations to find out about this position in the interview process. 
and I heard it like some of it takes maybe uh, more than a month, up to three months. I saw at one point, but my personal um, experience has been it's been about a month, you know, a little bit less than a month. I heard back at the beginning of this week on Monday is when I got the good news. So, but I know I applied May 30th. So. So my transition, I knew it wasn't gonna be easy again. I was getting out of my career field. Even though jet engine, um, a jet engine technician in the Navy, they can make really good, um, you know, a really good career in the civilian world, working in um, all kinds of things, power plants, wind turbines, wherever something is firing up and it's uh, shooting a flame out the back, you, we have a job there most likely. So uh, the toughest thing that I was gonna deal with and my advice to someone, if you're staying in the field that you learned while you were in the military, whether you're a, um, a diesel mechanic or a jet engine mechanic or electrician, I would, and you're dead set, you know you're getting out or you know you're retiring, it's never too early to plan. It's, it's never too early because you, you never know what's gonna happen. And when you have a plan, have a backup to that plan, then have a backup to that backup because nothing ever goes, you know, as, as planned. And then, you know, my, another piece of advice, don't ever be afraid to ask for help because um, you've been in the military for this set amount of years, whatever your years, is asking for help in a, a, a different venture you're about to go, you about to go back to the civilian world. So I would ask questions. I would ask, you know, for help, like how I got help from Higher Heels and how you helped me with an interview, all that kind of stuff you need to really look into. And you can't start that months before you get out. You have to, this has to be something that you decide. And me personally, I started really preparing about three years before my contract was up because I knew my contract, I wasn't gonna re-enlist to continue my contract and I knew I was changing careers. So if you're staying in the same career, just look at the equivalent of what you're doing in the Navy or whatever branch you're in and what it is in the civil world does the same thing. Then pull up that job description and look exactly what these people have and what do you need. Yes, we have the, you know, 10 years or whatever years of experience, but, you know, and maybe that would be enough to land you the job and that's, you know, perfectly fine. But, you know, I don't want to be on a chance, you know, so I was looking, I always advise people, always look at what the civilian equivalent of your job is and look at what they require you to have. That way you have the, you know, X amount of years of hand on, on hand experience and you have that degree and you have this cert or you have this license. That way, you know, when they see your resume come up, I imagine in my head, I'm thinking, when they see your resume come up, like, oh man, he got everything. Let's give him a job right now. I knew I wasn't gonna have that because I didn't have the hands-on portion of it. So that's why I had to hit the college really hard. That's why I had to get my certification and things like that. You know, I was competing with civilian people who actually had, they had the um, the certification, they had the hands-on experience, they had the degree. So I was, you know, I was one step below because I didn't have that workforce experience. So my advice for people who are changing careers like myself, going to the whole different area, the whole different field is, and it's transition out the military, you definitely have to plan early. You have to plan early. You have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to go to school. You gotta, I mean, we've been in situations where we're on deployments working 16, 18 hour days. And I know that, you know, hey, you're about to get out, but you need to push a little bit more and, and just, especially if you're changing careers, you need to go to school. You need to be on equal footing or better than, you, than the, the field that you're about to go to go into on, as in far as civilians. And, you know, job descriptions of um, these positions you're trying to get, they really paint a picture of what people are looking for. And hey, if you're like me, who's stepping into a whole different career field and you're not gonna have that workforce experience, you really need to know how to translate what you did in the military into something that you're looking at. So um, I was a technical uh, technician. I was a technician in the military and this job was gonna be a lot of technical work. So I used that portion of it. And, and um, as you t you know coached me on, I emphasized on it very heavily that I did technical stuff and 
I, you know, I didn't know jet engines when I was a kid, something I learned in the military. And this is definitely a job that I know I could learn and learn it quickly and do it. So my advice to someone changing careers is you really have to know what the civilian counterparts have already and where you can catch up. Because if you're trying to change careers and you plan too late, it's going to be a very rude awakening when you get out because now you don't, you don't have anything that, um, the civilian counterparts have and you know and that's what you need to compete in a different field you need that you know you need that cert you need that um education you, you need you need something you just can't get in there and say hey um can't just give me a job it's not gonna happen so and um use the use the programs the military gives a lot of programs while you're um transitioning out like uh, onwards opportunity and on high our heroes and those you know some great people and they help you out and you know listen and and do it and put the time in because the more time you put in the smoother the transition will go and um i'm living proof because you know i kept putting that time in and uh now i got a job with this company and it's a really good company i don't see them going anyway anytime soon so i'm fairly sick you know i'm fairly certain and um in my job security with them. So uh, that's my biggest advice, plan, 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 and plan. And don't, there's never too early to plan. Like I said, I plan out three years ahead. And I, I'm not being anything special, it's just I had, I knew what I needed to do and how I needed to get there. And I, my thing was I need to be exactly as close as possible to what civilians are in that career field I was going to. Um, the virtual interview, it was the first time I did anything like that. Um, there wasn't anybody else on the other side of the screen. It was just, you know, questions will come up and they give you about 30 seconds to think about it. And then you had to answer in about two to three minutes. Like you had a two, three minutes to answer the question to the best of your ability. So that was something new that I had to, um, that was something new I've never done. So, and I didn't know what questions it was going to ask. They don't give you an idea. So because it was a technical position, I assume there's gonna be technical questions. So I just studied up on a lot of technical things that I knew that job from the job description that they may ask me. And uh it for this company, it, it wasn't it wasn't as bad as I thought. And I, because I didn't know what I was going into and and I thought maybe I was gonna actually speak to someone, it, it wasn't what I expected. Again, there was no one on the other side of the screen. It was just a question comes up. You answer, you know, you think about it for 30 seconds, the much as they give you, and then you answer the best of your ability and then it's on to the next question. And then, you know, from there, uh, if they like what you, they heard, they'll, in, they, you know, they invite you to the next phase. So. so after, after the virtual interview, and I got the notification that it was time for the on-site interview, um, and I got the mock interview from you, and you gave me a lot of your feedback. The uh, for this particular company, I uh, the first it, the the, the on-site interview was in two phases. It was uh, first with the manager, then uh, the second phase of the on-site portion was with two of their technical engineers, and from there. Again, you know, I went into the device. You told you told me, hey, don't make it about uh, don't make it about. I ask you a question, you answer it, then we go on to the next question. Make it very casual. That way, you know, they could in their mind they're visualizing that you already work here and that we're just speaking. So um, I, I did that and I, I stuck to the game plan to the point where hey, uh, you know, I had the, I had the first interviewer shoot, you know. I had her laughing. It was like a cordial conversation between, you know, coworkers. And we actually elapsed the time and we had another person out there waiting for the interview. So I was in with, with her alone. The interview was the interview was only supposed to last till nine, from nine to ten thirty. But I didn't leave there it's like almost one. Because uh the first interview, you know, I just I was talking, we, we were talking, you know, I was expressing how much I wanted to work here, what my skills were. When it got to the actual interview portion of it, um, I answered the questions to the best of my ability. 
And, you know, it was, it was very casual. Um, uh, one of the really big advice that he, you, you know, you gave me was at the beginning of the interview, you know, ask him, what is it about my resume that you like that, um, you, you know, that you invited me here today to have this conversation with you. You know, I said conversation, I didn't say interview, but, you know, I said, you know, just have this conversation with you. And then they went into my resume saying, hey, this is the things that um, we liked about it. And, you know, I said, okay, oh, you know, I would focus on that. So a lot of the the um, questions that she did ask me, I, I focused on those points. And then, you know, at the end of the interview, you know, we had to cut it. We had to cut it because we went way above the time and the next interviewer was on waiting outside um was asking hey where can i start you know my last question and uh you know th they started laughing and said you really want to work i was like i really want to work here and it's like so when could you start i said i could start right now if you want me to <laughs> but they said they had to go through the rest of the process and have other people to interview so you know and then from there was the second portion the on-site interview which were two engineers and i was a little bit I knew, hey, the manager good questions, um, but it wasn't to try to trick me. It was like just to gauge what I was. I knew, and um, for the engineer portion, I thought they was gonna be, you know, like they were gonna grill me and ask me all these technical questions. And they did ask a lot of technical questions, um, but the portions of the questions that weren't technical were, you know, I think I knocked it out of the park as far as. Um, you know how I answered. They asked me, "Hey, do you know what do you know about this company? Why do you want to work at this company? There are certain aspects about the company that they really want you to, uh, you know, they want you to know if you know it. And like, you know, I know this e-commerce company. I, I love them, and you know, I did a lot of research into the company, and there's actually information out there. So I knew that, and they were impressed with that. When it came to the technical portions of it, I answered the best as I can." Um, you know, I knew, I'll say about 50-50 in there, like, hey, either I knew it, I knew it. If I don't know it, I'll let them, hey, I, I don't know that I can't ask you, I cannot answer that for you right now. But so I, the whole time I was smiling, you know, I try to make the conversations as um, casual as possible. And, um, you know, we went over the time again with those two guys and, um, you know, and from there, I asked them the same question, hey, where can I start? And then, you know, they said, <laughs> um, well, it's up to the manager. She makes the decision. So, you know, after that, I left, went home, and then, you know, it was on a Friday, so I was sweating the whole weekend thinking, hey, you know, am I going to get this position? You know, I was confident. You know, I had them laughing. I had it very casual. And uh, Monday morning, I got the, you know, the email saying that we're offering you positions. I was like, hey, you know, I got it. Very happy. So... Again, I think the thing that made a difference for me was um, not speaking about the technical, my technical background um, was my love for that company. And um, I didn't know who I was going to, who's going to be interviewing me, but they did provide me with one name. And I, you know, I looked her up and saw her background and she had almost, like I said, she had, like I told you, she had almost 30 years in the career, you know, so I was like, okay, well, she's definitely you know, 30 years, it's, whoa, that's, you know, it's a much as <laughs> I've been alive. So for the whole, whole career, she's, you know, been in the career field as long as I've been alive. So when the interview came up, I told her, I was like, you know, I looked you up on LinkedIn, you know, because that's another great, a great um, information tool right there. I looked you up on LinkedIn and I saw that, you know, you've been in the field for, you know, um, about almost 30 years and actually about her background. How did she get into there? Again, make it very casual that, hey, you know, I want to know how did you get started and things like that. And, um, you know, I think I asked the same question to two engineers. How did they get into it? And then I asked the question to both of them. Is there anything about my background that you're concerned about with me being able to perform this, this job? And, you know, they said that, you know, for that particular company, they love hiring from within. And, you know, personally, the two engineers, they started off at something completely different. And, you know, they, and you look at them now, you know, they're high up there. So um, I think because I was, I knew about the company, you know, I, I talked really confident. I really knew a lot about the company. And um, I showed an interest in 
how they got to where they was at now. And I've built that, you know, in that little small time, I built a, um, at least the, the idea that, hey, this guy, you know, he'd be great here, you know, we'll, we get along with him, things like that. And um, I want him to visualize as much as possible. And I think that's when I really knew, hey, this interview is going real well because it's not, you know, it's not, hey, they weren't grilling me with questions. It was like, you know, I was asking them questions, they asked me questions. They started asking questions, then I started asking questions. It wasn't back and forth like, um, you know, <laughs> I'm not explaining it, but it was very casual. And I, I believe that, you know, that was when I really thought that, okay, well, I really got a good shot against this position because it was really casual. And one of the questions I asked them while in the, um, the interview was, you know, where do you expect to see me, you know, if I was hired for this? And, you know, I didn't say if I was hired. I said, so, you know, where do you expect to see me in this, you know, when I start working here, where do you expect to see me in 30, 60, and 90 days? And I kept saying that. I didn't say if I was hired. I said, where do you expect to see me in 30, 60, 90 days and in 12 months? So they brought up something real, something real good, something that I knew that, hey, this is going to be something they're really going to look at hard after I, I, if I was, you know, now I am tired, but um, was the uh, the questions that the technical questions, they were saying that the questions are more for to see where I'm lacking in skill and what they need to work on. So that's my plan. And I've been doing it even now, even after an interview was done. I, you know, I started looking at the questions I got wrong and trying to learn more about that area so I can never get that wrong again. So my plan is, is to now work on the areas that, for the questions I didn't get wrong, I got wrong and I didn't know to, you know, bridge that, um, bridge that gap and eliminate that, um, eliminate that factor that I didn't know that question. So for the next 30, 60, 90 days, I'm working really hard on the things I didn't know. And my long range plan is to, um, within a year's time to be almost on the level of the two engineers that asked me, you know, the, the second uh, portion of the, uh, the interview, they were engineers. So and, you know, even the manager said, she said, I asked her when, you know, in 12 months, where do you expect me to be? And she said, you know, I need you to be on the level of an engineer. So that's my goal, you know, learning everything I can to be on the level of an engineer by my 12 months, even before that, if I could, you know, I did it in the military, you know, I didn't know anything about jet engines, but I advanced really quickly. So I'm going to do the same thing when I get to Amazon. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and keep learning as best as I can. And um, I'm going to just hit the ground running and learn everything I can and take, you know, bridge all the gaps of things I didn't know and start looking down at the next, um, the next position. And I'm, um, it's gonna keep, just keep learning. You know, that's all you can do. You have to keep learning. Uh, my only, the only thing I can add is um, for whoever's watching and they're transitioning out the military, uh, whether it's retirement or voluntary separation, like myself, uh, it's never too early to plan, and do not be afraid to ask for help, because you're entering, um, you're entering an area that you haven't been in since you joined the military. For some people, that's four years. Some people, that's eight. Some people, that's 20, 30 years. So, you know, you have to ask people that's already in the civilian world who were successful in the civilian world, whether it's a small degree or a high degree, they're going to know something that you do not know. So do not be afraid to ask. Ask, um, ask questions. Ask for help ask for people opinions and, um, you know, you'd be successful. That shows you that, hey, you're not, you know, if you don't know something, you're not afraid to ask for, you know, for help, which I think, you know, whether you're civilian or military, that's something that we're lacking on a lot. It's asking for um, the knowledge of somebody else because that knowledge could really help you out like it, it helped me out. So don't be afraid to ask. And that's the biggest thing. My uh, biggest advice for somebody is to ask, ask, then ask. Thanks. Thank you for all the, uh, the wisdom and knowledge that you gave me going into this uh, interview. And, uh, right. You know. Hey, 
you you you're the one who executed so <laughs> hats off to you 